a wet blanket is simply a person who is pessimistic by nature. And secondly, they are an individual. Um, their wet blanketness um, is part of their personality. It's part of who they are. And so as we move through this outline, uh, you'll be able to follow along with me. We're going to look at the traits of a wet blanket uh, next. Our author uh, describes the traits of a wet blanket as first off being cynical. A cynical person is somebody that is motivated by self-interest. Um, they have little trust in others. A, a wet blanket is also by nature a pessimistic person, an individual. Uh, they have a sense or an idea that things are simply too good to be true. Their glass is always half empty. And uh, even when good things happen, they still seem to be looking at the negative uh, surrounding those events as if something bad is yet to come, even though good things are, are uh, amongst them at that time. Um, other characteristics include things like uh, discounting. A person who is a wet blanket a pessimist who is negative will um, be quick to uh, reject positive experience and discount them as something less than uh, positive or good. Uh, if we were to do something that um, we might be proud of or we might want to share with somebody else, like being a senior in, in school um, and looking forward to graduating, they would say that, well, others have done that before you and you're not the only one and it really isn't that big of an accomplishment. Um, they tend to be deflating. Um, a person who is a wet blanket loves to pull down people to their levels and burst a bubble, if you will. They are, by nature, fault-finding. They will look for faults in, in everything. Um, they tend to be nitpicky. They wanna, they wanna look for uh, things that there shouldn't really be anything wrong with, or if there was something wrong, it would be very small. But they like to find uh, any small things to pick out. Uh, within that same realm, they're also uh, melancholy. This is an idea that their past failures, um, and their present is miserable, and the future is bleak. Our author calls them uh, despondent, uh, sacked with sadness. Um, it truly is a, a negative person to be around. Continuing on here uh, in, our, in our outline and following along in the traits of a wet blanket, we see that a person who is a wet blanket is also stagnant. Uh, they are stagnant because a negative person, um, this negative outlook that a person has on life, it tends to keep them in their comfort zone. Uh, to take a risk and to put somebody in a position where they may try um, something, something different that could lead them into failure, it would be better for them to not do those things and to stay in their place of comfort. And they also um, uh, are rejecting, uh, quickly to reject other ideas and quickly write them off as being bad or, or negative. Um, and they can be quite contaminating. Um, when you're in a group and you've got a negative person, that negative uh, vibe tends to bleed off onto other people, and it tends to be something that uh, we have a, a pity party with a group of people. They like to bring people down uh, into their level of uh, dismay with them. As we move through this and we kind of get an idea of what kind of person uh, the trait of a wet blanket is, uh, the, the reason why I chose this is because um, a wet blanket uh, somebody who is negative and pessimistic is, has been something that I've grown up with. My dad was always kind of negative, and uh, I've been around several people who are just, just negative Nancys is what, what I've always called them. Um, we're going to look at what makes somebody a wet blanket, because in understanding who someone is uh, helps, us, helps us to understand how do we respond to them. Um, the first thing that we look at is that uh, being pessimistic is not always a bad thing. Uh, being pessimistic can at times help somebody um, because the fear of a possible failure can be used as a motivator. However, if a person is clinging to those fears and they become negative and they affect other people around them, they become a hurtful form of, of a pessimist. Uh, they become somebody who is toxic uh, in a group. 
Um, a per person who is a wet blanket is referred to as somebody that is pitted against forces beyond their control. Uh, because they don't have control over a situation, uh, they might find themselves uneasy and um, that negativity just kind of takes over them. Um, it's important to understand that being a wet blanket, the personality is not something that is someone is born with. It's something that is learned. Um, being a, a wet blanket, being negative, is typically something that is learned from uh, family, friends, uh, other encounters, so that um, when someone is negative to us and, and it bleeds over, we learn how to be negative. We learn how to see the, the unpleasant side of things. And we learn how to focus in, in that direction. It's also important to know that a person who is a wet blanket and displays those characteristics a lot of that stems from a problem with low self-esteem. Um, the idea is that if you can bring people down to uh, your place, that um, you elevate yourself. And it's not really elevating yourself. What it's really doing is pulling somebody else back so that you can catch up to them. Uh, the idea that I had with that is the idea of tying weights to a runner's uh, feet as, as, they're, as they're running. Now, I may not be the fastest runner, but I would have a better chance of keeping up with you if you had something slowing you down. So a low self-esteem and a person with a negative attitude is definitely somebody who's going to want to pull other people's down, uh, other individuals down, so that they can keep up and, and catch up. It also makes them uh, feel better about the way that their life is, is turning. Uh, now we will shift to what's going to be the longest part of our study um, and how to deal with people who uh, have this um, outlook on life and who carry on this personality. Uh, this is a, a, a difficult um, person to have a relationship with. They tend to pull energy away and they make life and the things that are around us about them and they tend to be selfish about those things. So as we, as we look at these things, uh, we're going to want to want to learn a way that we can deal with them that is polite, uh, that is courteous, and that shows compassion to people who uh, don't necessarily know that they're being this individual to them. It's just kind of who they are. Um, and the first thing that we want to look at here is in dealing with a wet blanket. And if you're following along, this is section four uh, in our notes. And this is, we should remember that people who are a wet blanket um, are not alone. Uh, in fact, we are all uh, wet blankets from time to time. Um, when we find ourselves in things that we really don't want to do or we have a negative approach to anyway, uh, we will tend to come up with excuses and uh, we will um, look for a negative outlook, maybe something that we can use to get what we want out of it. I, I think about my days off and I think about wanting to be able to relax, but uh, the moment that I'm at home and there's stuff to be done, I'm asked. Uh, and, and at times I give a, a negative approach like, well, I'm too busy or I've got too much going on or I couldn't get it done. Uh, those are just simply things that are, um, are negative and they're being a wet blanket. Um, and we all do that. So before we look at characterizing somebody as a wet blanket, uh, we should really look at and, and think about, is this something that's temporary? Is this something that uh, that there is an underlying cause for? Is it something that we can uh, work in a different direction to kind of move around? Or is this something that's going to be a little bit more um, long, uh, a longer problem that they would be dealing with, something that's uh, more chronic? Um, as we move through here though, the, the second part is that when dealing with somebody who is a wet blanket, we should not uh, allow them to be contagious to other people including ourselves. Um, it is very easy to let a negative nature uh, devour everything around it. Um, in, a, in a workplace, in a church, in a home, a negative attitude uh, spreads. A pessimistic approach uh, will take on those that are around it and it, it can pull them down and it can pull an entire group. And when you're stuck in, in close vicinity to one another, that negative attitude can really uh, take over and take hold. So we have to make a choice uh, how we're going to let that affect us. 
and how we're going to let somebody that is negative uh, change the way that we look at things. As we move through here, we're going to move to our, our, our third point, which is that understanding that there is a difference between critical thinking and negativism. Uh, there is a difference between uh, a thought out approach to difficult things in life and somebody who is simply pessimistic or negative about all avenues of life. Uh, there is a difference between uh, really going through and studying and looking at what trials and, and what problems we might come into contact with and, and um, on the other hand, uh, simply being too discouraged to even attempt. So, what's the difference? Well, uh, critical thinking means that we look into a situation and we determine certain obstacles or things that uh, we might run into as we um, start a, a task. For example, if we're um, going to school and we're trying to get a college degree, uh, we might run into difficulties with money. We might run into difficulties with time and being able to balance things. Um, it would be negative to say that somebody simply just not smart enough or they can't do it or, or they're not capable. Um, one thing that happened to me before I started going to school was um, I was told that uh, college wasn't for everybody and a person with my uh, ac academic ability probably wouldn't fit best with um, collegiate um, academics. So um, you can choose to let that negativism um, affect you or you can choose to simply think critically about it. Uh, for somebody who is not, who has not displayed um, the best grades in, in, in um, grade school, uh, might have to work a little harder, might have to get some tutoring. Uh, they might have to put in a little extra hours to accomplish those things. Uh, that's not being negative. That's simply being critical uh, about the, the things that we're going to have to do. And with anything we set to do, um, it's okay to be critical. It's okay to sit down and really think about what is going to be required of us. In fact, that's the smart thing to do. Um, but there is a difference between that and negativism, and we need to understand the difference. Um, the next thing that we're going to look at is to, um, as the author says, monitor, monitor your inner voice. Uh, there is a need to balance how we view the capabilities um, our capabilities. We cannot allow negativity to to full, pull us under in our capabilities or allow ourselves uh, to be confident, which leads to self-delusion. Um, there is a, a point in, in which that we can be overconfident in things, and that's again kind of reverting back to our, our critical thinking. Um, we have to um, play within ourselves and, and examine within ourselves what is the right way to approach things? Uh, there has to be some realistic approach. Uh, it can't be overly optimistic and it can't be overly pessimistic. There has to be a balance there. And listening to somebody who is always negative uh, can pull us in a direction. And in the same way that being overly positive uh, can have a similar uh, negative uh, side effect. So those are things that we really have to pay attention to and we have to monitor uh, as our author says. Um, next, we have to have a comeback. When we deal with people who are negative and we deal with these wet blankets, um, we can't just sit back and allow them to say whatever they want to say and no matter the hurt or uh, the disagreement that's there. What we should have um, is to be able to exchange a negative uh, thought or feeling um, with a positive rebuttal. Um, um, I'll explain that a little closer. So a person who has uh, a negative statement as if um, it can't be done, um, what we should focus on is what can be done. Uh, there is a difference between pointing out all of the things that are, are negative in a situation uh, and, it, and it feels overwhelming. If all you do is focus on everything that is, that is negative and you never focus on what can be done, well, we might not be able to change the world, but we can change somebody's life. And if there is enough positivity and if there's enough things that we're working together to accomplish, then yes, we can make a difference. Uh, but if we only focus on uh, the negative things that are there, what we can do, then um, we are not dealing with somebody who is a wet blanket in the right way. 
Uh, we should be expressing to them um, a little bit of positivity instead of allow them to bring negativity upon us. Um, the other part, as, as we move through here, um, is that there should be a desire to combat irrational uh, thinking. Wet blankets tend to be uh, out of touch with reality. Um, they tend to be so negative and so downheartened that they tend to um, lose sense of what actually can be done. Um, if you're a negative person, um, you tend not even to want to get started on certain things. And because of that, uh, this negative thinking um, can hinder your ability to see what you can do, as we said before. So um, when we see somebody say thing that simply doesn't make sense, um, there needs to be some combative nature to that. Uh, not that we want to, uh, to hurt anyone or to throw anybody under the bus, but when somebody says something that is illogical, that makes no sense, uh, we need to defend those things. We need to fight off the false ideologies and the unreasonable things that they say. Um, next on our, on our list of ways that we can, we can deal with a wet blanket is to keep on keeping on. Um, when dealing with these things, if you let everything negative that somebody says change your dreams and your aspirations, um, you cannot expect that uh, any reward to come out of that. Uh, if you think of it this way, if you did everything that somebody told you to do, or if you didn't do everything that somebody told you you couldn't do, what would you get done? Uh, nobody cares as much about the things that you want to do with your life as, as you do. And uh, a person who wants to be negative, uh, because of their low self-esteem and because of their position, they're not going to want you to succeed because they're not going to want you to be perceived as anything better than they are. So. Um, you have to make up a mind and you have to follow uh, with the, the, the dreams and the aspirations that you have. Um, I will add because this is a Christian uh, campus that God's will is very important in this as well. Um, and that if you're following um, God's will, uh, others are going to step in and say that you can't do it or you shouldn't do it or it's not the right thing to do. Um, we simply can't listen to that. We're following the direction of something bigger, and we, we can't succumb to those who want to hold us down. Um, so keep on keeping on, and don't let those people deter you from the things that God has called us to do. Um, moving on to the next subject here, we have that um, we should laugh the wet blanket dry. Um, sometimes the best cure for... for uh, negativism is a conscious ability to bring laughter and joy into that person's life and it's a conscious effort it takes work to uh, get somebody laughing um, you think of a comedian who gets up on stage and and begins to do a stand-up bit uh, they start off with some light humor jokes and the goal is to simply get somebody laughing um, once you can get somebody to smile get somebody to laugh it's much easier to keep them laughing and to keep them happy. Uh, breaking that first smile is the hardest thing. Um, and uh, with, a, with a wet blanket, they aren't going to smile easily. So it's going to take a little bit of work. But the power of a smile is, is something that can really change a life and can change somebody's outlook. You'd be surprised what a difference in, in your day can make if you started out with uh, a positive event and started smiling and how much better your day would be from that point forward. Uh, sometimes we often use a good laugh and uh, a good smile in our days. Uh, we're gonna continue to move through here. Um, we're moving right along. Uh, the next part is to not let a wet blanket determine your mood. This is a conscious choice. Uh, this is something that we will have to make a decision as to how we are going to let somebody who is a, has a negative influence affect us. Uh, we have to remember that it is our choice to do things uh, to, for everything that we do in life. It is our choice. Nobody makes us do those, do anything. Uh, we choose uh, what we eat. We choose when we go to work. Yeah, we're told we're supposed to be at work at a certain time, but we, we choose when we're going to show up. And uh, we can choose to be late. We can choose to be on time. We can choose um, how we uh, speak, what we say, um, and every aspect of our day. 
Um, and that's funny because um, it, for a negative person, they want us to respond a certain way. And if that rubs off on us, then we can kind of take up their uh, negativity and allow it to affect us. But it's, it's our choice. Um, so uh, in determining your mood for, for a day, uh, regardless of the type of people that are around us, just remember that it is your choice, choice and your choice alone how you're going to respond. Uh, next, we'll look at who to and not to and get advice from. Uh, let's just say shortly that uh, a negative person, uh, somebody who has a very negative outlook on life, um, would be a bad person to get uh, counseling if you're depressed or sad. Um, we like to talk to people about things that are going on in our lives. I'm the kind of person that when I'm struggling with something, I like to get other people's advice. So I tend to ask questions and um, I tend to bring other people in and on some things that I'm struggling with just to get um, an extra uh, set of eyes, or, um, an extra look on the, something that I might be struggling with. But it is important to remember that there are some people that will not give us positive advice, uh, encouragement that can help us through difficult situations. Uh, in fact, there are some people that are only going to lead us down a, um, in, in a negative direction. And uh, those are people that we need to stay away from. We should be, however, to look for people who are positive, who have um, mastered certain things that we struggle with. Look for people who have gone through and, and overcame the struggles that we're going through so that we can uh, grasp um, positive reinforcement to that thing. And the other thing I'll add to that as well is God word, God's Word has a lot of things that we can use uh, to help us because its advice uh, does not come with negativity but it comes with uh, an uplifting approach and it comes with uh, an overcoming nature that uh, we as human beings, uh, we just don't possess. Um, and as we move uh, through here, uh, we're going to look at uh, not, uh, don't hold out for a transformation. Um, the last um, uh, way that we're going to deal with somebody who is a wet blanket is that um, they may not change. Uh, we, we have to look at this from the perspective that they are people who have uh, may have been born into a negative household. They may have negative people that are around them that have really uh, created in a personality. And this isn't something that they um, necessarily can just wake up one day and say, hey, I'm not going to be negative anymore. Uh, they might be an individual who is, is uh, simply uh, negative in heart, negative in nature, and that's kind of who they are. Um, there's a, a gentleman that, that I work with that um, if you don't know him, you would say that he's probably one of the most unhappy people you'll ever meet. But just spending some time with him, you realize that that's kind of his personality. Um, and he's not really that negative. Uh, he just kind of comes off that way. Um, but if you spend time with him, you, you realize he's got a lot of joy and a lot of, a lot of things that brings him happiness. Uh, it just, he tends to openly complain a little bit more. Um, so uh, don't hold out for somebody to change, but also res res respect who somebody is um, and allow them to be themselves at times. Uh, yes, you can try to be positive and you can try to be uplifting to them, um, but don't expect people to change who they are uh, simply because you, you don't like uh, the person that they are. Uh, we're supposed to love them regardless. Uh, 